All right. Of course, that is 3x is less than what? 9. 9x is less than 3. How do I graph it? What do I have to do at 3? I, I, like, I got to draw an open circle. Why? Yes, up to 2.99999 infinitely, but not 3. What's the way we check that we did it right? What's the easiest number to check with? 0. zero. Is 3 times 0 less than 9? So are we correct? Yep. Then we go to this one. Negative 5x is greater than or equal to what? 35. 35. x is... Less than or equal to seven? Negative seven. Negative seven. Color it in. Draw it. Double check that you did it right. Easiest number to check with is zero. Is zero less than or equal to negative seven? Is it? No, zero is greater than negative seven, so the arrow can't go over zero because it's not part of the solution. Everybody can do this, yes? All right, in grade 11, the difference is there's another variable. So let's go. 127. There's the question. How can you choose the correct amount of two items when you want both items? Let me give you an example. You are, no, I won't give, I won't say you. I, I'll see how many people know this. What, if any of you can guess, you should know, I say it all the time. What is my favorite food? Pizza. No, I can't eat pizza anymore. Pasta. No, I can't eat pasta anymore. You should know one of my favorite foods because I'm in your restaurant all the time. <laughs> Pho, or, yeah, the tacos, right? Okay. I am going to go out for lunch every day this week. The choices I have because of my uh, celiac disease limit me in my choices. I cannot go for pizza. I cannot go for pasta. So two places that I always go when I go out to lunch are tacos and pho. Okay? Noodles. You're dead inside. Vietnamese... Noodles. I know, right, Aiden? You got a lot of nerve. It's not like you turn around to them and say, what's butter chicken? Anyways, I like both those things, yes? They are both desirable to me, right? I have to choose how many times I can go for tacos or pho. All right? That's how you say it. P-H-O is pho. It's not pho. I'm not going to say it wrong like Charles Boyle. Actually, he doesn't say it wrong. It's Rosa that says it wrong. And besides, you can make way more jokes when you pronounce it properly, right? Like the king of all pho restaurants is the... Huh? Huh? I want a full bowl of pho. Full, huh? Huh? But there's some funny ones when you pronounce it wrong too. Like, what's faux dinner? I'm faux hungry. Right? There's a lot of ways you can go both ways. So if you don't know how to pronounce it, you can still have fun with it. But you only seem slightly ignorant to people who can pronounce it. So, how do I choose which is desirable? Well, do I have unlimited funds? No, of course not. I do not have unlimited funds. I have a very strict budget of $20 a day, which I spend on anything I want. 
I have other budgets. I have a budget for gas. I have a budget for groceries, like for the whole family, a budget for this, a budget for that. But I have $20 a day that I can spend on whatever I see fit throughout the whole day. Lunch costs money, yes? All right. Now, if I don't need anything else that day, what is the maximum amount I can spend on lunch? $20. How many days in a week? Five, because school days, right? I don't go out for lunch on the weekend very often. I'm, I'm at home at lunchtime. So five days, yes, which means I have a maximum of what? $100. Good multiplying, Ashton. Well done. So now, a decent pho meal. Huh? I'm... Well, my maximum money is $100. A decent pho meal with tips is, uh, well, plus tip, 15 Because I get the large. The large is $12.99 a year. Oh, okay. So $11.99 plus, I would still tip up to 15 Come on, what do you think I am? Jeez. You know, although sometimes the waiter at that restaurant forgets to bring me my tea. I won't say anything about who that restaurant waiter may be. You have, that waiter has forgotten my tea. Now, to be fair, that waiter didn't charge me for tea, but he did forget to bring me tea. I just asked for tea. I'm not picky. I just wanted some tea. I'm not the other teachers. At any rate, okay, we're all good, yeah? A decent taco meal costs a similar amount. Now, what what are the two variables in this situation? Tacos or pho, right? So one of them is an X, one of them is a Y, but I have a maximum I can spend, yes? Up to $100. If I only get pho at $15 a day, five times 15 is what? Five times 15. $75. Could I buy all my lunches in my $100 budget? Easy peasy, yes? Now, if I am paying $20 for tacos, can I buy all my lunches? No, I just said if I'm paying 20, because I'm paying 15 for the pho, right? Even though it's $11.95, I'm tipping. $11.99. Well, plus my forgotten tea. So, don't you? Then why didn't I get my tea? Anyways, that's good to know you guys don't charge for tea. I just always pay 15 bucks, but if I never even look at the bill, I just, here's 15 bucks. But tea is free at the Pho Enix Diner? Nice. That changes things. Well, it used to be the Phoenix Diner, and then I assume Aiden's family bought it, and they started serving Pho. But it was already spelled P-H-O Enix, because that's how you spell Phoenix. So now it's not the Phoenix Diner, it's the Pho Enix Diner. Oh, really? Have you always had pho? Because I used to drive by it and I was like, it's just a breakfast and lunchy place. I didn't know there was pho involved until recently. I thought you were recent owners. Huh, interesting. Anyway, another story for another day. So if I am paying $20 a, me- a day for tacos, can I eat tacos every single day? Why? Because I have $100 to spend. Everybody agree? Now, I have deadbeat friends. As we all do, right? We all have a friend that never has cash, right? Oh, I forgot my wallet. I'll get you back next time. How many of you have that friend? Put your hands up. You all do. How many of you are that friend? Yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so, if I don't wish to eat alone and all my friends are deadbeats, what does that do to my meal planning? 
Oh, it, it doesn't bring down my budget. I still have 100, but now it changes what I can order, yeah? Everybody with me? Okay, so how do I choose the correct amounts of what is desirable? Well, I have $100 to spend, yes? So what would you call that mathematically speaking? It's my maximum, yeah? So there is often a max or a minimum that I am allowed to spend or allowed to do, yes? Right? So if I have a maximum or a minimum, am I solving an equality or an inequality? It's an inequality, isn't it? So if it's a maximum, like I had, $100, then what is the equation? Well, my pho plus my tacos must be what? It's a maximum. Now remember, that's my $20 for everything I want to do. Less than or equal to $100. What's more desirable for me? Less than, so I have a little bit of money left over. Everybody understand? And this is really how all budgeting works. All everything works, right? I'm on a diet. I have 5,000, well, 5,000 is too many. I have 1,500 calories a day that I can eat, right? So then it would be my calories must be less than or equal to 1,500, right? Everybody understand? We use inequalities all the time, but we don't think about it. Right? I got 25 bucks for the weekend. I want to see a movie and go to Castle Fun Park. Right? I mean, you guys are all too old for Castle Fun Park, but you're not? Okay. But you go to the go-karts and the mini golf, right? And the batting cages and stuff. You're not there for, you know, whack-a-mole and getting candy tickets. Oh, all right. Well, whatever. We use them all the time, Yes. Okay, so how can you choose? What you've got to do is you have to choose the amounts of your two variables that you can still fit into your inequality, right? Okay, so here is the, uh, an, an example. So read that through and let's talk about it. You've received a gift, uh, you can read. Yes, always does, right? I could just dine and dash at the Pho Enix Diner and I'd have 20, 15 extra dollars for budget. I'm sure they won't remember me. Well, they won't because I'll just keep ordering tea and they'll keep forgetting it. <laughs> All right. So we're all good, yeah? So let's talk about this situation. Card has value, $15, you've explored it, blah, blah, blah. What are your two variables here? What are the two things that can change? I could buy songs or I could buy albums, yes? Now this is a bit of a pain because what numbers do we like to use? Or... What letters do we like to use? X and Y. Do we have to use X, X and Y? No, I could use S and A, right? It wouldn't matter. But we like X and Y. So we're going to say songs are X and albums are Y. Everybody agree? Okay. And I have $15 to spend. Yeah? So let's talk about that $15. Is it set in stone... Or is it a maximum? It's a maximum. I need not spend it all, right? Everyone agree? I don't have to. I, it's a maximum. So this becomes a max, right? So let's talk about this. How could we get this on a graph? Well, what are the two things we're counting? Songs and albums, yes? 
And is this 15, is that a song or an album or something different? Something different. That's our money, yes? So we got to think about the money. What is a song worth? One dollar. X plus, what is an album worth? Five Y's. Have to be what? 15 or less. So how do I write that? Less than or equal to 15. Everyone agree? Now, you don't know yet, most of you, how to put on a graph two variables with the negative or with the inequality, do you? But I bet a great many of you remember how to graph that. What would you do to put that green line on a graph? Talk to your neighbor. Go. You've seen things that you know for how to get that onto a graph. Just one of the options. Pardon me? Slope intercept form. You could isolate y, yes? Which would be 5y equals negative 1x plus 15, yes? Right? And then y would equal, not negative x. y would equal negative 1 fifth x plus 3. Agreed? Everybody remembers that now, yeah? Your other option, let's say you forget that, is of course a table of values, right? When x is 0, what's y? When x is 0, what's y? 3. When y is 0, what's x? 15. When y is 0, x is 15. So now we could graph because you only need two points, right? There's no variable, so you know it's, or no exponent, so you know it's a straight line, yeah? So as soon as you have two dots, you can connect them. Everybody good? All right, let's do so. We're going to use this whole graph on, on purpose, all right? So please watch what I am doing here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to make that one. Okay? Now I've said that's Y. So these are albums. Agreed? What would be down here? Songs. And I'm going to keep the same scale. One, two, three, four, five. One. Two. Actually, I'm not. I don't want to do that. We're going to go songs, one, two, three. So each square is one song. And albums, we're going to stretch out. Two, three. Now we could put this on a graph, right? Because our y-intercept is three. And our slope is negative one-fifth, yes? Right? So I would go down one, down to two, and out one, two, three, four, five. Does everyone agree? Everybody understands what I did here? Yes, everyone's cool? So what do we know about this line? It will continue. Down one, out one, two, three, four, five. Down one, out one, two, three, four, five. Which makes sense because there is our 15, zero, yes? Is everybody cool with that? Now let's just check. If I buy five songs, I'm down to 10 bucks, yes? So how many albums could I buy? Two. Everybody with me? Yeah? Okay. If I buy 10 songs, I can buy one album, yeah? Everybody still cool? Right? Now, that's if I follow the line. Do I have to spend all my money? No. What if I only bought one song? Could I still buy one album? Could I still buy two albums? Could I buy three albums? No. Why? Because I'm beyond my line, aren't I? Everybody with me? If I bought six songs, could I buy one album? Yes. Could I buy two albums? 
Why? I'm beyond my line. What if I bought 10 songs? Could I buy one album? Yes. What if I bought 11 songs? Could I buy one album? No. 12? No. 13? No. So what does this tell you? Does any of that space work? No. Does any of that space work? What amount of that space works? All of it. But here's where it gets a little tricky. Can I buy half a song? Can I buy half an album? So even though all of this mathematically works, does it work in real life? No. Does everybody understand? Everybody's cool? All right. Let's go. Turn the page over. Every linear equality with two variables will look like one of these forms. AX plus BY is less than C. Okay? Or AX plus BY is less than or equal to C. Or is greater than C. Or AX plus BY is greater than or equal to C. Everybody cool? Now somebody always says, it has to be positive? No. Because subtraction is just adding a negative, right? Everybody understands that it's always going to be this. Your two variables put together have to be less than your maximum or greater than your minimum. Is everybody okay? Now let me give you an example of when this would be the case. Organizations often have a budget, right? Like this school has a budget. And it's weird because our budget comes from the government, yes? If we do really, really well business-wise and we save money, what does that tell the government? That we need less money. So how much do they give us next year? Less money. Yes. So while they want us to be uh, thrifty, they then punish us for that by giving us less money the next year. Right? The whole goal of government buildings like this should be to drop right at zero. Right? Everybody with me? So sometimes you've got a a minimum, right? All right, so everyone's cool? Okay, so what two variables do we always like to use? We always like X and Y, right? Now, if X and Y work for being any two variables, obviously, the best way to draw X and Y is what? What mathematical construction do we use to show X and Y? No, what mathematical construction shows that? What is something you have seen in math that shows values of X and Y in one place? Pardon me? A table of values. That's one. T of V, that's one. Two, we have a system. Three, how can we show it with a picture? A graph. Or the coordinate grid, yes? Everybody cool? And you just saw us do that. There it is in uh, a... a si- an, an equation, not a system, because there's only one. An equation. There it is in a table of values. There it is on a graph. We are comfortable with all three of these, yes? Comfortable might be the wrong word. We are aware of all three of these, yes? Because we haven't done this since the 10th grade, right? Okay. The ordered pair 
What is every single ordered pair in the universe? X, Y. The ordered pair is a solution to a linear inequality if the inequality is true. What does that mean? For an inequality to be true, what does it mean? I'll give you an example because people are looking at me quizzically. X is greater than 7. Is that an inequality? Okay. So now, 3X plus uh, 5 is less than 10. Is that true? What is the first number greater than 7? 8. What's 3 times 8? What's 24 plus 5? Is 29 less than 10? So is this true? No. Right? So what does it mean? It's the solution if the inequality is true, if it works. Right? How do we know if it works? How, what did you do to that, which was the solution, to see if it worked? <coughs> Tested it where? You do know. Where did we put this test? Into that, right? So, if I have x and y, 2x plus 3y is greater than 9. Is that an inequality? Have I given you an ordered pair right now? Have I written an ordered pair anywhere on this question? It's a yes or no question, guys. Have I written an ordered pair somewhere in this blue? No, because I have not written number, comma, number, right? Somebody say a number, any number, two. Somebody say another number, any number, six. Is that an ordered pair now? Excellent. So what is that value of the ordered pair? X. What is that value of the ordered pair? Y. What you see right there. So what can I write there? 2. What is 2 times 2? 4. Plus, what do you see right there? What does y equal? So what can I write there? What's 3 times 6? Is 4 plus 18 greater than 9? 4 plus 18 is greater than 9, yes? So is this one of the solutions of this inequality? Yes or no? Yes. Everybody cool? Okay. The set of points. Now, we remember that when we add just one variable, the inequality graph, x was greater than 7, looked like this. Right? Right? How many answers are there? How many numbers fit into that solution? Infinite. All of these numbers bigger than 7 work, right? Do any of these numbers, does anything less than 7 work? No. So what we call that, the set of points that satisfy a linear equality are called the solution set. Or, that's in algebra. Or, it's the solution region. And that's on a graph. So everybody needs to know the difference. All right? So let's look back at the example we just did. Where were the numbers that worked? Blue or pink? Blue. So on this graph, the solution region is all of these blue numbers. Right? The set in algebra, what numbers 
could I have under here for X? X could be what? What's the lowest X I could have? Zero. And what's the highest X I could have? 15. That's the solution set. Notice it's a domain, right? What is the solution set for Y? What's the lowest amount of albums I could buy? I just gave it to you. What's the highest amount of albums I could buy? What? Three. That is the solution set. Every number on X between 1 and 15. Every number on Y between 1 and 3. Everybody cool? Now, every linear inequality starts with a line, doesn't it? Now, what would you call, what word would you use to describe this line that splits these two? Think of words in English. Think of one. Divider. Okay. What are some other words that we could put there? He just said divider. No, divider. It divides them. What else do we say? Border, I heard somebody say. Border, sure. Because it's a border between two regions, right? We got one right down there, yeah? Okay. We still haven't gotten the right word, but you're on the right track. Can somebody think of another one? Barrier? Ooh, I like how you're all in the Bs. I'll tell you this. The B is right. It's a line. Spitting out bees, right? Behemoth. Barrel. That's not a word. What we actually call it, it's called the boundary. All right? And that is the line that represents... The equality. And I'm going to highlight the equals and the equals. All right? And that we graph just like grade 10. And it gives us our max or our min. Does everybody understand? In the example we've already done, the line showed us our maximums that we were allowed to spend. Everybody cool? Sometimes it'll be the minimum. Once we put that straight line on the graph, what happens to the Cartesian plane? It's split into two regions, yes? One region is the less than than side. And what's the other region? The second region is the greater than side. Is everybody cool? And it's written right there. For one solution region, Greater than. A plus B is greater than C. So with this one, which I'll do in yellow, is that one a maximum or a minimum when the line is greater than C? That would be a minimum. And when the line is less than C, that would be a maximum. Is everybody good? Yeah? Yeah? All right, so what's different now? In grade 10, what, did, what was the only thing we had to do when we saw x, y equals something? Graphed it, and we only cared about what? The line. What do we care about now? Right. How does it differ? In grade 10, when we started graphing lines, only the line mattered. But in grade 11, 
the solution region matters. Is the line still important? Yes. The line is important because it's our... Right. Line is important because it's our... I'm going to use minimum or maximum. Is everybody good? Everyone's good? All right, let's try it. Now, it's you guys figured out the album one pretty quickly because it made sense. It was a real life thing, right? We can count songs, we can count albums, yeah? All right, so let's do a more general term one. Let's graph this inequality. So what's the first thing we got to do when we are graphing an inequality? What do we need? We need some points, right? We need that boundary. How do we find the boundary? First step is always your boundary line. How do you find it? Does that look an awful lot like a line equation? How would I make that a line equation? I would get rid of the, the inequality, make it an equality, right? So the first thing we're going to do, 2x plus 3y equals 6. Yeah? And now what should I do, Jacob? I have two choices. If I was in the 8th or ninth grade, I would use a table of values, wouldn't I? What are we going to use in the 11th grade? We're going to isolate y. 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. What is y equal? Negative 2 thirds x plus 2. Yeah? Everyone agree? So, now that we know what our boundary line is algebraically, we need to get it on the graph, right? So let's do so. Ah. Why in this case am I getting a full Cartesian plane? Why have I got X's and Y's this time? Because it'll go negative. This isn't a real life situation, is it? We're just looking for numbers. When we were counting albums or songs, we can't buy negative songs, so we don't need negatives. So... How do I take this and get it over here? You have to remember the 10th grade. Start with my y-intercept, which is what? 2. 1, 2. Then what? Graph your slope, which is what? Left. Left, 2. Slope. Oh, I better remind you all. What is slope? Rise over run. So down two and right three. Everybody happy with that? What do we know about that pattern? It'll keep going forever. <clears throat> so I can go ahead and draw that line on the whole graph, can't I? Is everybody happy? With oh, son of a bee! Oh, we went over the test, that's why. 